Jubilee's High and back with a 60 books in isolation. Right, so this is the second part of a book I did uh, in one of my previous series and um, previous um, projects. And um, the sequel to The Witch's Kiss, The Witch's Tears by Catherine and Elizabeth Corp. Okay, so now in the previous book, um, basically Mary met Jack, who turned out to be under a curse, and it's um, quite a tragic little story. And this book kind of further similar vein. This is basically Mary now getting over what her experience, what happened to her. And let me just read the blurb. Okay, here we go. Can true love's kiss break your heart? Not easy being a teenage witch. Let's ask Mary. She's drowning in textbooks and rules set by the coven, drowning in heartbreak after the loss of Jack. But Mary is not the only one whose fairy tale is over. Big Brother Leo is falling apart and everything Mary does seems to push him further to the brink. And everything that happens to Leo makes her ache for revenge. So when strangers offering friendship show him a different path, they'd be mad not to take it. Some rules are made to be broken, right? Okay. Okay, so it's an interesting dynamic because in Mary's family, all the women are witches. However, the boys don't have that. Now, Leo, the brother, is going through a very rough time. Um, essentially, he's come out the closet. Um, people don't really understand. They're kind of giving him hell for it. He feels very, very isolated. And with Mary, her journey, now she's come more into her powers, she is going through the typical teenage life, if you will, trying to reconcile feelings for what happened with Jack. As I said before, it's quite a tragic story. And kind of continue from there. And now she's come more into her powers. Her grandmother, who kind of runs a coven of witches, is kind of getting them more involved in the craft. And basically, Mary's very, very powerful, the witches go. So she's under a specific set of rules, and she tries... The structure is so rigid that even her own mother kind of pushed away from it, so pulled away from it. But this is more about Mary's journey with how dark it can really be. And as a, as an urban fantasy, it's very, very good. Very, very good. Now, interestingly, because it's done by two sisters, Catherine and Elizabeth Corr, and the narrative style, it's um, they write very, very differently. I've kind of noticed that. I think at times you can tell who kind of wrote which narrative, but they kind of fuse well together. And this is the thing, okay? This is this is what I like because this is more exploring the world. The first one was about setting up the world. It's more about exploring it in more detail about the coven itself. This bit here. If they had to concentrate on the type of witchcraft she was actually interested in, that would be her first wish. Healing was obviously important, selfless and all that. It wasn't the kind of magic that she wanted to spend her life doing. Flying or becoming invisible, those were the kind of spells that made her heart beat faster. Or the Cinderella potion, one drop of which would just transform the user into an utterly gorgeous version of herself. Gran kept promising they'd get onto the exciting stuff, but it never seemed to happen. And you can see Mary's kind of impatience. She wants it all. For someone who in the first book was kind of resistant to her power, and she's coming into it as being more stronger. She wants more of it. But obviously, the power is like a drug, okay? And she's rushing into it way too quickly. Mary is having the same kind of issues that so many other teenagers... Oh, they, this is like very similar books in this kind of thing. She's rushing into it too fast. She doesn't want to learn the basics. Okay? Okay. But the thing is, she's so, so hung up on Jack as well. And obviously, I actually like the part of the dynamic. In the most stories would have had the narrator, the protagonist, skid it over it quite quickly. But Jack impacted her so much that she just can't. It's not just one of these things you can just get over. This has totally transformed her life. And this bit here, okay? It shows us how Jack, this is page 38, has kind of impacted on her. She wanted to tell the truth about Jack and Gwendolyn, say, say Gwendolyn and the curse, about being a witch and all it meant. Apart from Leo, Ruby was her best friend in the entire world. It would be amazing to let Ruby see her for who she really was. But Mary didn't know how to begin. Perhaps she should just show Ruby their powers, turn this patch turf in front of them into a bed of multicoloured daisies. Yeah, exactly. So in that part, you know, goes off from you. I, I like that. I like the fact, okay, that due to the fact she can't really talk about what's going on in her own head, Mary's a very kind of insular young woman, and I actually like that. She has to figure it out by herself. She, she struggles to open up and talk to people. And it also kind of shows how it's impacted on her mental health. Obviously with Leo as well, okay. Um... Basically, they come across Ronan, and this this bit here, okay, this is when it kind of being, this is the wizard, witches, but now it's being in wizards in the dynamic, 
and different kinds. And one thing I loved is the fact is that witches were so prejudiced against wizards. I absolutely love that. I love that. It's a bit hit, okay? Right. This is going into books for witch part, witches. Witches are, this is from her grandmother. Witches are hard to kill. We can avoid, use magic to protect ourselves from ordinary people and to avoid accidents. We can heal ourselves. Usually we prefer to expire in our beds, all of our affairs in order, have the family notified and so on. We just can't hold back time eventually. We'll be ready to move on, but our deaths expected, organised. Okay, so. Usually the dead witch has been experimenting with a dangerous or prohibited form of magic. That's why it's very discussed. Covers are embarrassed and, and try to cover it up. Or sometimes a witch has been killed in a fight with another witch or a wizard. You see, they're very, very prejudiced against wizards. Wizards are like, you know, they, it's a different kind of magic, if you will, okay? As this is very, very typical. Witch magic, as obviously as the history of magic, is more nature based, it's more spirituality. Whereas wizard magic is kind of to them the opposite. So to them, wizards are bad, wizards are bad, and witches are good, okay? Are you a good witch or a bad witch? Okay, so. And then. <clears throat> But the thing is, if the first one is based on, obviously, fairy tales, or so is this one too, this is when Mary is reading a book about, um, obviously, you know, a book about magic. And this bit here, and this reminds me so much of Rumpelstiltskin, okay? This is kind of the clue to the actual, the actual theme of the story. She forgot all about the promise to a mysterious stranger until she fell pregnant with her first child. The witch began asking all the travellers she encountered for news of a man who could spin flax into gold and had been to learn her visitor's name. But now has had had heard of such a man. There she sought to protect her family from the, str from the stranger, seeking help from many other witches and wizards. And it seemed to work. No one appeared to claim the baby and then and the little girl grew in wisdom and in power. Then nearly twenty years later, the witch now widow heard a commotion outside her house. Thinking it was her daughter, they turned to the gathering herbs, which opened her door. It was a stranger, looking exactly the way she had all those years ago. In his arms, he held her unconscious daughter. I've time to collect my debt, the man said. Have you discovered my name? Rumpelstiltskin is the clue to the the history of this book. Okay, the story of this book. But one thing i be honest though, okay, because this is when um, it was Leo who comes across Ronan who is, well, yeah, he's a wizard. And this is when I think the book falls apart. The book really, really lacks structure. This is more about the dynamic between witches and wizards. And at the one point, Grand goes missing, so the coven and the other witches are trying to find her. But I, you know when you read a book and you would kind of struggle to recall it afterwards? This is a story about Ronan and basically trying to help his brother. I'm kidding. This is basically a story, okay, two siblings are two di di different sides. But one thing I really felt it really, really lacked was structure. I struggled to remember anything about this book after I finished it. Okay? It just seemed to be talking so much, okay, about the between witches and wizards that at times I think it lost the story. It was about Leo just basically come to terms with how his his, his um sexual orientation, okay, was kind of changing the world around him. Now he's kind of comfortable in himself. But obviously he's losing a lot of friends in the process, which happens every they teenagers have come out the closet. It happened then, it happens now. And I'm sorry if it happened to you and you're watching this, okay? Um, people's perception of you change when you come out the closet. And that's just a sad reality. Um, it was about that. It was about Mary kind of getting her friendship back together. It was about Mary kind of trying... It was about magic and wizards. It just felt more, okay? Right. This is when um, Ronan's talking about being a wizard. Wizards are territorial and secretive. Generally speaking, if a wizard finds a young guy with magical ability on his patch, he's almost as likely to kill him as to teach him. At least that's the way it used to be. Methods are slightly more subtle nowadays, he shrugged. The point is, it's plebs or nobodies most of the time, but can never really relax around them. Except perhaps with your brother. I thought we could become friends. I like him. Yeah, in a way, okay, Ronan, this mysterious Ronan, okay, just kind of magically appears and gets involved in Leo's life is kind of seeking a friend as well because in his own community he is a pretty much an outsider okay as a wizard which i kind of like i kind of like that i always thought there was more to leah than one let on i mean a male witch it kind of has a lot of charms as well do you remember with charmed they were all only the girls are witches and suddenly okay boys had to be born in the family which really kind of had grandmother 
and those boys have magical powers too and it kind of irked a lot of people so it was like that but the problem is this book just felt so inconsistent too much going on the things these wizards coming in too it just felt kind of forced as well that even as i'm doing this review i kind of struggled to really kind of recall anything of merit of the book and the twist at the end i kind of felt should have kind of been brought in earlier this book felt more like filler or fill up the dynamic of the witches and the wizards in the world than an actual consistent storyline so coherent storyline so the witch's tears it was okay but not as good as the witch's kiss that i felt a bit more the thing is about and i about this as well and i actually understand it is the first bit was about passion okay the first bit was about passion is this was trying to set up trying to set up the world and i don't think it nailed it as well as it could however it was actually a very well written novel but kind of lacked its spark if you will but the witch's tears by Catherine elizabeth core and just for the cliffhanger alone i recommend it because that was a jaw dropping oh my god moment but that's pretty much it so i'm signing off here love to you all mm -hmm. and